All right, what's happening, y'all? It's your boy Rico from Street Scores, and that was a very ugly, very embarrassing loss, man. Who is to blame? It's a lot of blame to go around, but who gets the bulk of it? Who's the majority of the blame? I mean, that is an embarrassing way to lose a game. Granted, it's on the road. It's Taylor Heineke's first away game as a starting quarterback, but you had 10 days to prepare. So there's no excuse for that at all, but we're gonna dive into all of that, my full review and quick reaction analysis and everything that happened. But before we do, make sure you subscribe to the channel, hit the bell next to the subscription button so you get a notification immediately. And every time I release an informative and opinionated video just like this one, be on the lookout next week for that Falcons game. I'm not gonna be live streaming, but I have some special stuff planned. So stay tuned for all of that. But yeah, man, y'all already know, man. We got to get to this sad, sad review. Let's get it. Well, man, that was ugly. Um, I think first and foremost, when you allow 43 points, automatically the defense is the biggest thing to blame. Got to. And y'all know me. I'm the biggest trade up for a quarterback, trade the farm, whatever you got to do to get a franchise quarterback early in the first round. I've been on that wave for two years. I'm that type of person. I want to do whatever we got to do to solve the quarterback position. But at the end of the day, even if we had a Malik Willis, a Matt Corral, or Carson Strong, a Justin Fields, a Trey Lance, we would have lost that game. We just didn't play well. And I think that's my overall theme. I don't think we're 21 to 43 that much worse than the Bills. I mean, the way we just played the Chargers, the Chargers beat the Chiefs, the way we just beat the Giants, I think we just played our worst game. Granted, the Bills may be the best team we've gone against so far this year as well, but I also think at the same time we played our worst game of the season. I mean, we had receivers dropping passes where the first two games, that wasn't really a problem. Guys were snagging passes out of the air that probably shouldn't have been caught. And today we were just dropping easy ones. So it just, to me, it just looked like a lack of concentration throughout the whole live stream. I was asking if everybody was okay. Is everybody sick? Is it, is it, is, is there something going around the team? COVID something, you know what I'm saying? It just looked like Jack Del Rio was tripping. Players were tripping. Scott Turner was tripping. It just looked like a lot of mental stuff and like effort. Not necessarily they were just that much better than us talent wise. It looked like we just went out there and got outplayed. But um, y'all already know how the third down thing goes. You know, we 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 were two for eleven on third downs. They were nine for fifteen. That's just how it goes, man. Like that, you can't win like that. You just you just cannot win like that. Um, so again, defense is the main thing to blame. That's number one. Let's get that out the way. And you can start from top to bottom, starting with the defensive coordinator, Jack DeRio. I don't understand your personnel groupings. Awful. Jamin Davis has already shown you he's better than John Bostic. John Bosick is a good on the field coach for the defense. Call out whatever the offense is doing, get everybody where they need to be. But then once the ball is hiked, Jamin Davis is by far better than John Bostick out there in coverage, run support, all of that. You know what I'm saying? So I don't understand why Jamin Davis is barely out there. I mean, there was one possession the whole time they were in the red zone. Cole Holcomb, John Bostick, no Jamin Davis. And that was after the great play Jamin Davis made on fourth and two to stop him to force a field goal instead of potentially it leading to a touchdown. I'm just not understanding. Jamin Davis was making plays in the run game, in the passing game, all game. We just barely saw him. Again, and then Cameron Curl on top of that. Cameron Curl, why is he in the game less than a Landon Collins? Cameron Curl, almost every time you saw him, he was out there making a the play both in the coverage and in the run game just like Jamin Davis but even better and more consistent granted he was out there more than Jamin Davis so that's why he had more opportunities but I mean Jamin Davis and Cameron Curl looked good when they were out there between the both of them the only play I remember any of them really giving up where the Jamin Davis, where like it was a pass for a first down and he was right there. Who knows, Cole Holcomb or John Bostick probably would have been 20 yards away like they were a lot today. Jamin Davis was kind of there, but he still gave the play up. And then Cameron Curl, that zone play where Benjamin St. Juice handed Emmanuel Sanders off to Cameron Curl. Cameron Curl had to hurry up and run over. 
Granted, like I've been telling y'all, I don't like camera colors or free safety. I like them doing pretty much everything else in the DB group except for free safety. Maybe some cover three, cover four, maybe cover two, but I don't want it to be where Benjamin St. Juice is letting the receiver go in the back of the end zone, and then it's up to camera curl coming from the middle of the end zone all the way to the corner to go make that play. He's not athletic. That's his biggest weakness. Camera curl has athletic limitations. That's literally his biggest weakness. His biggest strength is his intelligence, his IQ, his instincts. That's what he's best with. Those are his best tools. Free safety requires a certain amount of athleticism for it to work. But either way, camera curl, Jamin Davis, Jack Dorio, why are you not playing no more? Please explain. I will give you the floor. I will give you five minutes to give me an explanation right now. And then like the play calls we had, I mean, even in that camera curl example I just gave you, why are we running zone coverage right there? We're getting abused in zone coverage. And then the, the play afterwards, after they scored that touchdown, they went for it on two-point conversion. Benjamin St. Juice, man coverage against Emmanuel Sanders, broken up pass, great coverage. Benjamin St. Juice, zone coverage on the touchdown play, Emmanuel Sanders wide open. Like That should show you the day and night difference of what we look like playing man coverage and zone coverage. Because on the touchdown, we play zone, Emmanuel Sanders, nobody within three yards. We play man, two-point conversion, Emmanuel Sanders locked up. Great pass deflection by Benjamin St. Juice. I mean, I, I'm just not understanding the play calling. I mean, I could dive into that for hours in itself, but we got to move on. Then you have the secondary. Landon Collins getting beat. William Jackson with good coverage occasionally, but getting beat. Kendall Fuller still having a terrible season. He's our worst DB right now as far as coverage goes at the very least. Um, Benjamin St. Juice got beat a couple of times, but you expect that from a rookie. But overall, he had a pretty good game. He had some really good plays, and then he also had some plays where he got beat. It seems like usually when he gets beat, it's like a comeback route or, or, or an out route. Any type of route where they run up and then they run back towards the quarterback, whether it be out of bounds or back to the inside of the defense. Either way, that just seems to be the route that gets them. But like William Jackson, there's no excuse for getting beat deep by just pure speed that one play. Kendall Fuller, like, it, it's bad, bro. We need better from all of y'all. Benjamin St. Juice, again, he has to play better as well, but he's a rookie, and I liked what I saw from him at times. Again, J and rookie-wise, Jamin Davis, again, sparingly, even though he only played a little, he looked good the times that he did play. Then going to the linebackers, we're getting killed. They literally came in. You can see it clear as day. They came in with a game plan to attack our linebackers. Literally just attack them. Run receivers to where the linebackers are, running into their zones, their coverage responsibilities, whether it be man or zone, and get the ball to those guys and, and just let them do whatever they want. You know what I'm saying? That they're going to be able to get open against Cole Holcomb and John Bostick almost every time that they want to, and they continuously did. Um, and, and then, like, going back to the secondary, why was Cole Beasley cooking Kendall Fuller so bad at one point in time? Like, it was just drive after drive, like three drives in a row. Cole Beasley versus Kittle Fuller was automatic first down. But back to the linebackers, really not much to say except for they were just getting cooked, mainly in coverage, but also in run stopping. I mean, John Bostick had his ankles broken when he tried to make a tackle one play. He was lost in coverage, or he was just not fast enough to get there in time, even when he knew what was going to happen in coverage. He, he's just bad out there. He's just bad. Defensive line, still no pressure, no excuses. Now back to Jack DeRio. We saw when we finally blitzed against the Giants, it worked really well. Why were we not blitzing today? But at the end of the day, you have four first round picks on the defensive line. All of these guys, should, somebody should be getting there every play. Somebody. I mean, Chase Young, I'm really looking at you because I don't know where you've been in the first three weeks. But just generally, the defensive line has to be way better. There's no way that four first round picks, nothing's happening. I mean, the defense in general, we have seven former first round picks out of 11 starters and it just 43 points on our head like how like what's going on jack Dorio, you're supposedly this great defensive coordinator I, I i'm not seeing it scott turner we're gonna get to you but like jack Dorio, this is more your fault than scott turner's fault scott turner has his faults as well he he probably called his best game in his career against the giants then he came right back and looked sorry again but Jack DeRio, you were still worse than him. So I, I don't know. At the end of the day, we we, we got to be better. We just got to be better on defense. So y'all get the majority of the blame. You can split up defense into several categories. You can say, however, you Jack DeRio's number one, secondary two, linebackers third, defensive line fourth, whatever order. But those are the top four easily as far as who we need to blame for this game. And then we get to the offense. Now, the offense, you can also rank that. 
based on how you feel about it, but Scott Turner, we're just going to talk about you first. We're going to start top to bottom. Scott Turner, got to do better with the play calling. We got to take advantage of matchups. There's no reason Terry McLaurin only has four catches for 62 yards. Like, I'm not, I'm not understanding. He, he has seven targets. I think he, at minimum, should have 10 a game. I, I'm not understanding why Terry McLaurin, you saw them get the ball to Stephon Diggs no matter what. I mean, they were literally running plays for him to get the ball behind the line of scrimmage that they had to, screens. He's not even really like a screen type of receiver, but they were like, hey, he's our best receiver. We're going to get him the ball no matter what. You know what I'm saying? And, he, and Stephon Diggs ended up having 10 targets with six catches. They did whatever they could. They were forcing him the ball at times, but it worked generally. I feel like we need to do the same thing. And my theme has always been for no matter who was that quarterback, no matter who was that offensive coordinator for us, I feel like if you're going to be wrong, be wrong at least throwing it to Terry McLaurin. You should never throw an interception trying to throw it to Adam Humphreys. You should never make a mistake trying to throw it in a double coverage to like a Cam Sims. I'm not saying that's exactly what happened, but I'm saying if you're going to be wrong, Taylor Heineke, whoever is that quarterback, offensive coordinator, be wrong at least throwing it to your best player. You know, I can live with that. And I hate the fact that it's been a thing the Burgundy of Gold has been doing for years now that we use our best players as distractions rather than abusing them. Again, Stephon Diggs had 10 targets. So they did whatever they could to get him the ball no matter what. Whereas we, it seems like we walk into games like, okay, they already know Terry McLaurin's our best player. So we'll throw it to him a couple of times. But mostly, he's just going to be a decoy for everybody else to eat. And I hate that. I, I never understood why we do that. Also... The running the ball, like, come on now, Scott Turner. Like, I don't understand. Antonio Gibson only had 12 carries. In the beginning of the game, it looked like he could get whatever yards he wanted. Then later in the game, he started to get bottled up a little bit by the defensive line and the linebackers. But that was later into the game. Early in the game, we could run at will, and then you just stop doing it. J.D. McKissick was running really well. I mean, he's averaging 7.7 7 yards per carry. We just didn't abuse that. And I still don't know why we're not seeing any Jared Patterson. Because Antonio Gibson missed one wide open hole up the middle, did all of this dancing, ended up getting no yards. If it was Jared Patterson, he probably would have hit the hole exactly where it needed to be hit when to hit it. It probably was a first down. And instead of us punting, we're continuing to move the ball, potentially get a score. Scott Turner, this is on you. So Antonio Gibson, first quarter, or early second, whatever it was, really early into the game, has a screen pass that goes for 73 yards and a touchdown, and you decide, no more. Never doing it again. Just best play we've had all season, and we're just never going to run it again. We're just, we're just I don't know. It, it worked really well, so obviously it won't work again. Is that the logic? I don't know. I, I think you're overthinking it. You're like, okay, it worked this time. Now they're going to be prepared for it. I don't care. Keep doing it until they stop it. Keep doing it until they show you you can stop it. Why do we throw a screen pass to Antonio Gibson for a 73-yard touchdown and not throw him another one? I, I, if you could explain it to me, please. Because the only other target Antonio Gibson had was that wide-open drop that he had coming out to the flat. That, that That's it. No more screen targets, nothing. Like, you didn't even try to throw him another screen. You threw a screen to Cam Sims at some point. And, I mean, I, I can see the logic. The defense won't expect it because nobody expects it. He's our slowest receiver. And so it's kind of like, a, oh, you expected me to do this, but I'm going to do this. But at the same time, he's our slowest receiver. If that were Terry McLaurin, that may have been a first down. So, so you just overthinking stuff. Again, you're not as bad as Jack DeRio, but you were still bad today for a lot of reasons. And then moving on to quarterback, Taylor Heineke just wasn't a good game. You had flashes, you had highs, you had lows. And that's the Taylor Heineke experience. Granted, he had way more lows this game than he had against the Giants. But, I mean, he still had some flashes. He had some moments. The receivers were letting him down at times. Overall, it just wasn't a good game from him. But there were some of those moments where you're like, well, this is the Taylor Heineke that we root for. This is why he's our starting quarterback right now over Kyle Allen. And then it's just other plays. It's just like, man, we need to do whatever we can to trade up for a quarterback in the first round. So, And then the receivers, again, dropping passes. De'Ami Brown, you disappointed me on that one drop pass. Cam Sims, I'm used to you dropping passes. I like you as a receiver. But, like, you know, I'm I'm not surprised when Cam Sims drops a wide-open pass for no reason. De'Ami Brown, you let me down there. Granted, he did that quite a bit in college. I remember seeing that on his film. But you let me down. Like, that should have easily been a first down. We ended up punting. That prevented points as well. Um, so it's just a lot of folds. There's a lot of just mental air. Again, I was out there questioning during the live stream, is everybody okay? Are we sick? It's just little stuff. We were beating ourselves. And then, of course, the refs. It's, it's, it goes like this often. I don't know what, what it is with us, but the refs cheat us like the first quarter and a half, 
and then we beat ourselves from there on so then by the end of the game people can be like well the refs you know they played they called a fairly even game the rest of the game quarters two through four they didn't hate it was even so you can't blame the rest but i don't know for some reason when the refs cheat us in the beginning of the games it looks like we just lose energy and that just keeps us down and then we start to beat ourselves first the refs were beating us and then we just beat ourselves for the last two and a half quarters so i don't know why the refs hate us but at the same time it isn't an excuse we just got to be better again we beat ourselves for the remainder of the game but the refs did hate the first quarter and a half at least just like they did against the giants just like they did against the chargers just completely one-sided calls but at the end of the day it's no excuse y'all need to go out there and play better because the way we got beat today even if the refs were perfectly even and, and called a perfect game we still would have lost maybe it would have been 38 to, to 28 either way we still lose you know what i'm saying so the refs suck it's annoying, but at the end of the day, we just got to play better. Be a Taylor Heineke, 14 of 24 with 212 yards, two touchdowns, and two interceptions. Now, that throw to Logan Thomas was beautiful, but Logan Thomas, you had yourself an up and down day as well. I mean, you had some good catches, some good yards. You helped my fantasy team out. That was a great catch for the touchdown. That's another thing, Scott Turner. Why don't we abuse tight ends in the, in the end zone? Logan Thomas had a catch like that against the Chargers as well. Ricky Seals-Jones had an amazing catch against the Giants against a smaller corner, against a smaller DB. And then Logan Thomas did it again today to a smaller DB. Why are we not abusing that? Taylor Heineke could clearly throw those type of passes. Logan Thomas, Ricky Seals-Jones can clearly make those type of catch. Why don't we do that in the red zone for now? But then again, I can't be mad at the red zone offense today because we scored touchdowns pretty much every time we got there. 21 points, no field goals. I feel sorry for anybody that picked up Dustin Hopkins in fantasy. But still, like, I don't know why we don't abuse that. Why don't we abuse that even just outside of the red zone? Second and five, throw it up to Logan Thomas. Uh, it just seems like they can't defend it. Logan Thomas just really hurt us, though. That drive looked like we were moving. We may have ended up scoring seven points, and he fumbled. And I think they, I believe they ended up scoring seven points off of it. So that ended up being a 14-point swing on Logan Thomas. Granted, the defense just has to play better and not allow them to get a touchdown, at least keep them to a field goal. But still, like Logan Thomas, you kind of made up for it with that touchdown, but you let us down there as well. Um, I remember seeing Ricky Seals Jones having a really good block on one play where taylor heineke rolled out and got it to terry mcclellan so shouts out to ricky seals jones the limited time that he played he mattered but logan thomas i believe he had a holding as well so a big up and down game for him again the receivers just in general didn't play too well i mean terry mcclellan i feel like he's more open than we think I can't wait to watch the All-22 film because I swear he's open more than we're throwing him the ball. There's no reason he's only getting seven targets. I'm pretty sure he's, he's open at least 20 plays. We're just missing him. We're just not throwing it to him for whatever reason. I don't know. But we just, we're not doing whatever we can to get the ball into the hands of our best players. Again, Antonio Gibson had a screen pass for 73 yards early into the game. We never did it again. I mean, literally not another screen target for the rest of the game. Again, Scott Turner, this, this play calling, not taking advantage of your matchups, finding something that works and never doing it again. I mean, we should have ran that wheel route that J.D. McKissick hit the Giants for. We should have ran that today. Why did we never see that? I just, I think he's overthinking it. I think he's like, well, the Bills saw it work against the Giants, so they're gonna do everything to stop it against us. Hey, show me. You gotta at least try it. I just don't understand that, Scott Turner. I feel like if anything, Terry McLaurin's the least to blame. The offensive line actually played pretty well against a, a, a good defensive line, so they have the least blame to go as well. I mean, there's blame to toss all around, and granted, the offensive line wasn't perfect, but they're definitely towards the bottom of who to blame. Terry McLaurin offensive line towards the bottom. Everybody else is above that in whatever order you want to have. I think offense, you know, Scott Turner, certain players, certain position groups other than offensive line need blame in the middle. And I think at the highest, you have to have the defense. Once you allow 43 points, I don't care what's going on. The defense has to be at the top. But yeah, I think defense, Jack DeRio, whatever order you want to put them in for the top four. Then after that, five through seven or eight. Taylor Heineke, Scott Turner, whatever order you want to put them in. And I think offensive line and, and Terry McLaurin are obviously at the bottom for who to blame today, for real. And thank goodness Brandon Sheriff's okay. He just had the wind knocked out of him when he ran into that wall, but I think he's pretty straight. But yeah, that game was ugly, man. Plain and simple, game was ugly. I don't know. We just had these slow starts and, and, and we just get abused throughout the game. I don't, but shouts out to Dustin Hopkins because... That one touchdown we scored after that kick he did, shouts out to Nate Caxer for even having that play called 
great smart play call beautiful kick by Dustin Hopkins that may be my favorite Dustin Hopkins play of all time because he kicked the ball essentially like a long on sides kick and then he was the one that recovered it as well so the way he put a backspin on the kick and then he was the one that recovered it that was one of the best plays of the game regardless of any team now granted Josh Allen I didn't even talk much about the Bills because we already knew their defense their secondary is elite the defensive line is good they have some good linebackers Josh Allen's clearly a top seven quarterback the Bills are clearly a top seven team so we already knew what we were getting into when we walked into this but the reason I just spent most of the time talking about us pretty much all of the time talking about us is because we just didn't play well and we beat ourselves again the Bills are a top seven team but like we just didn't play as well as we did against the bills as we did against the giants and the Chargers. again the, the bills may be the better team between those three and i think they are but we still play worse than we played against the giants and the Chargers. so that's where that chasm in points comes from we played a better team and we played worse football and that's why we got beat by 22 points more than double the points we scored i don't even know the last time our defense even with greg minuski allowed 43 points like that that's ridiculous man now i know the franchise quarterback talk is a thing like i said nobody wants a franchise quarterback for this organization more than me i've been the one in the middle of the crowd swinging saying we need to do whatever we can to trade up to get trey lance justin fields whoever you know i'm that's been me this whole time for a couple of years i was the one that was like i mean yeah going to the playoffs is nice but now we're picking all the way back because we won a division you know that's been me but it's still week three so I don't think we need to panic. I think we just simply played a terrible game. I don't think this is indicative of how bad we are as a team. I think this was honestly just an isolated event. This is a really bad game against a really good team. I think we will bounce back from the Falcons and then we'll be two and two and everybody's going to calm down. So we'll see. Again, it was a terrible game. A lot of blame to go around, but I blame the defense and everybody a part of it, including the defensive coordinator more than anything else. We got to be better linebackers everything coverage oh boy I, personnel groupings penalties refs gotta stop hating it's a lot to go around but man we just gotta be better defensive line chase young montez sweat jonathan allen where you at deron Payne was getting held all game he was at least trying that was bad man but all right y'all man that's really it please get in the comment section let me know how you feel about everything that went down this game please like this video if you liked it if you learned anything and of course i appreciate all of the support man shouts out to everybody that donates to the channel shouts out to everybody that became a new member today man tuba steve Jaden l carl mitchell and everybody else that donated man y'all are the real mvps of today tuba steve became a 12 month long pro bowl sponsor that's huge man that's a huge commitment i really appreciate that you're one of the mvps today and of course shouts out to all of my sponsors Sponsors, especially my Pro Bowl sponsors, name you see scrolling on the screen right now. Man, I really appreciate all y'all. Ugly game. I'm about to get ready for this post game live stream. So get ready to call in to let your feelings out. I'm going to open the phone lines. Y'all let everybody know how y'all feel. I'm not even going to do too much talking. I'm just going to be mediating and hosting. So catch y'all later. I'm out.